This is a Pythagoras cup. A cup that Pythagoras, yes, the same Pythagoras that the Pythagorean theorem is named after, would give to his students to drink wine. Looks like a normal cup, right? Well, let's see what happens when it gets filled up with water. What happened here? At first, it functioned like a regular cup, but then at some point, the water started draining out of the bottom of the cup. This cup is also called the greedy cup, so if some of Pythagoras' students got greedy, all of their wine would spill out of the cup. Let's take a look at a clear version of the Pythagoras cup. Here we can see there is a tube in the middle of the cup, and when it reaches a certain point, the water starts to drain from the bottom of the cup. Even if we tilt it, all of the water will spill out of the cup. How does this work? Well, let's take a look at the inside of this cup. The Pythagoras cup has a column in the center with a U bend. There is an opening at the base of the cup and another opening at the bottom. The limit at which you can fill this cup with liquid is the same height of this wall in the U bend. When a liquid is poured into the Pythagoras cup, it will rise to the same level in the column as the rest of the cup as seen in B. This follows Pascal's principle of communicating vessels, which states that a homogeneous fluid balances out to the same level in all of the containers regardless of the shape and volume of the containers. Once the liquid reaches the top of the column, it will then escape through the bottom of the cup as seen in C until all the liquid leaves the cup. So why does the water start to drain out at this point? The liquid in this cup has atmospheric pressure pushing down as well as gravity. Once the liquid goes over the bend, it will fall down due to gravity. Since this zone is closed by water, no air is able to enter in this gap, which creates a low pressure zone, which is less than that of atmospheric pressure. The water will then get sucked into that gap and cause all of the water to drain out of the gap. This cup is actually a siphon. Let's do a deeper dive into the physics of a siphon. Here is a siphon. Notice that this point over here is lower than the surface of the water over here. Let's take a look at this point inside the tube, but at the same height as the surface of the water, which is exposed to the atmosphere, therefore it is at atmospheric pressure. Now at this point, the atmospheric pressure is going to be equal to the pressure at point A, plus the pressure exerted by the column of water, which is the density of the water times gravity times the height of the fluid. Solving for the pressure at point A, we will find that PA is going to be equal to the atmospheric pressure minus rho GH. Let's take a look at another point down over here, which is exposed to the atmosphere, so it is at atmospheric pressure. Solving for atmospheric pressure, we will find that it is equal to the pressure at point B, plus rho gh, and solving for the pressure at point B, we will get that Pb is equal to the atmospheric pressure minus rho gh. Now, the height of the fluid column at B is greater than that than the height of A. Therefore, we can say that the pressure at point A is greater than that at point B. Let's take a look at a column inside the tube over here. The water will feel some pressure, pressure A, which means that it is exerting some force given by Fa, which is equal to the pressure at point A times A, the cross-sectional area. There will also be a pressure at point B that exerts a force Fb, which is equal to the pressure at point B times the cross-sectional area A. Since the area is the same, and we know that the pressure at point A is greater than the pressure at point B, then the force at point A will be greater than the force at point B. What this means is that there will be a net force to the right, and therefore the water will accelerate to the right. The water will then drain at the bottom of the tube. Now, you may be wondering, what if we used a denser fluid? 
Well, let's try it and see what happens. Here's a mixture of cornstarch and water. And as we can see, even if we use a denser fluid, the siphon still works.